I think it, it doesn't always have to be just health and wellness. I, mm. I feel like most of the New Year's resolutions are around health and wellness because that's what we're least happy with mm. throughout the year, which is kind of crazy because our health is, at some point we'll realize health is all we have. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. So today we are talking about why New Year's resolutions don't work. Whoa, it always like makes me a little nervous when we say that. <laughs> I don't know because I suppose it's because, uh, you know, that's all... All we talk, like in, when New Year comes, it's like the hot topic. Like, what's your New Year's resolution? What are you doing for the New Year? Da, 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 da. And it's like a big buzzword in the New Year. And we're like, nah, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if a lot of people do that. I don't, like, I feel like people don't set New Year's resolutions anymore. So no? You feel like it's like fading out? I don't know. If, I don't. I don't ever remember people doing it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it comes from like my teaching background, but it was always like the big buzz around school when you get back from the Christmas holidays. It was always like, "What's your New Year's resolution? Do you have a New Year's resolution?" What? Da, 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 da. And we'd actually sometimes get asked by admin what our professional new year's resolution was i i feel like we should set goals but it's most people are obsessed about only setting something for new year's just because it's new year's yeah like okay. it's like it's new year's i'm gonna set new year's resolutions i'm gonna set my goal and not really have much of a plan to yeah to do it i know what you mean you just set it to set it because it's new year's and that's what we should do <laughs> but there's no follow-through or no action or, or, or no, nothing really behind it to back it up and put it into action. That's right. That's what you're talking about. You know what else about about the food in having a meal plan is that you buy your grocery list. You buy your groceries according to the grocery list you've made for your meal plan, and it felt so good to have a full fridge. But not just a full fridge, but all the food in the fridge I knew I was going to use. Because I think a lot of times we go to the grocery store, we fill our cart, we put it in the fridge, and then we're like, now what? What am I going to do with all this food now? But with the meal plan, you know exactly what to do with the food, and you know you're going to use it. I like that feeling. And that's, again, that goes back to our, our membership group when people talk about saving money. That's one of the first things we hear. Because you're not throwing away food. You know what you're going to buy. You know what you're going to prepare. And then having a plan. So if people are asking like kids or family members or spouses, like, what are we having? Oh, don't give me that. (laughs) What's for dinner? You know what the thing is? Like for me, the reason why I don't feel like New Year's resolution work works are because they're not part of our lifestyle. So we live a certain life. The hardest thing to do is in New Year's resolutions is to set a new goal that we're like never used to. Mm-hmm. Like we've, if we're not used to setting goals, if we don't know how to set a plan or make that part of our lifestyle, we've just went through the holidays and we've had parties and we've had alcohol and we've had late nights, <laughs> excuse me. And then January 1st comes and we're like, I'm going to set a new goal. And we, and it's so foreign to our lifestyle. It's like we live, we live a certain lifestyle and then we're like, we're going to throw this in just like out of the blue. Yeah, like an example would be if you're setting a workout goal and you're and you say my New Year's resolution is to work out five days a week, but you never worked out before, <laughs> or it wasn't a part of your lifestyle before. So we would suggest to start 
slower. And if you want to incorporate working out or exercising on a regular basis, well, start with one day, <laughs> maybe two days, because it's going to be more attainable, more achievable if you've never done it before to start slow. That's right. So one of the things that we would recommend is starting out in your home. So start out in your home, get yourself a, a workout video to do at, at your home. You set out the same day of the week, the same time of the week. Now we can start transitioning this into a daily habit or a healthy habit. That's why we did, as some of you would have followed along to our 12 days of Christmas, creating healthy habits leading up to the new year. We just finished that because we want to create healthy habits, which is much easier. We slowly build instead of being like, bam, working out every day of the week. <laughs> usually that lasts for about a week, maybe two weeks. And we see it all the time in the gym. January 1st comes, people get their gym membership, they're all excited, they're all inspired, they go the first week consistently, maybe the second week, by the third or fourth week of January, it's starting to dwindle already in the gym. But you go to the gym the first week of January, it's packed. Every time, every, every year. January. You see all kinds of new people, they got new workout clothes, yeah. new shoes, all, ex all excited, and then they, they kind of wander around, try a few different machine pieces of machinery. And then they leave after a short amount of time. And I mean, there's, I don't, I don't want to say there's something wrong with that. We're not there judging people, but you can tell who, who's new there. And then you can tell the people that disappeared because you, then you have the regular people that last into February mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's how it works every year. It's, con it's consistent. So without having that proper plan, it's very challenging to make that a reality, a lasting goal. Yeah, and we used a workout routine as an example, but it, it goes for any goal that you want to set. Perhaps you wanted to do meditation or prayer every morning or read more books. Well, if you're not used to reading or you're not used to meditating or, or prayer every morning and you're like, I'm going to do that every morning. <laughs> every morning I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do that. Well, if you're not used to doing that, it's not part of your regular routine already. Same thing's going to happen as the gym example. So what else? So when I, I guess when I, if we could take a step back. So setting out a goal to work out, to make it part of your lifestyle. I wanted to mention that maybe you put in a certain area in your home where you're going to go and work out. So we started with stretching in the morning, like just set the same time, the same day. It's like an appointment. And that's why, how we can develop habit, habits by setting the same day, the same time and continually doing that over and over again. And I don't mean every single day to get started. Like we said, maybe it's a couple times a week. I'm not sure if once a week is going to do much for you. Maybe it's a couple times a week, then maybe it's three or four times a week. However that is, you start off with something small. And so maybe if you're going to the gym, you can just do cardio. But I also think that if you get involved in a fitness class, that can make a big difference, especially because a lot of times people show up at a gym and they're confused. It's so foreign. They're in a different environment. They feel like everyone's staring at them, which isn't the case at all. And... And then that's why people go away because they're not sure what to do. And they're just like, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's not very enjoyable. But if you find a trainer that you or a fitness instructor that you really enjoy, if you find some class members you can talk to before or after class or during, if you're Dorothy, then you can, <laughs> then you can enjoy the atmosphere a bit more if you're not used to showing up at a, at a gym, for example, and being like, I have no idea where to go or where to start. And if you're not used to fitness classes, if you've never been to one before, or if it's been quite a long time since you've been to one and you're nervous, that's okay. It, everybody is nervous. It's even, normal. It's normal. Even the most, even people who are experienced get nervous before a fitness class. And don't worry about, I know one of the number one worries or concerns is, I'm going to be the worst one in the class. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to be watching me, but it's not true. Everybody is so worried about themselves that they have no idea what you're doing. Honestly, <laughs> it happens so many times. Nobody's going to be looking at you because they're going to be so concerned about themselves and what they're doing. That's right. And everyone thinks that everyone's staring at one another, but it doesn't happen. Like people might, as an instructor, I can see that. Like I can th see sometimes people will glance at others, but no one's staring at them because they're so like so focused on trying to do the exercise. And if they are looking at you, they're probably looking for some help. <laughs> what the heck is next? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We just did a video for the amazing race. The amazing race is like, uh, I feel like it's, um, 
Oh, I mean, like the Secret Service or like the CIA. Like, oh, with yeah. all their rules? Like rules and regulations. A lot of rules. I feel like even saying the name is like a no-no. <gasps> Don't say it. Yeah. Don't say we applied. <laughs> they have so many. <laughs> Last year we applied and we had like our pages went crazy with people showing support and like offering advice, tips. And everyone wanted to ask these questions. We can't, you can't say anything. Yeah. Because they have all these <clears throat> rules and regulations. If you say anything, you're there. You immediately are like done with them. You're done. And there's even fines. If you get to further, like lots of money fines. If you get further in the stage, we actually made, I don't even know if we're supposed to say this, but we made it to the second or we made it past the first round. I should say we made it to the second round. Yeah. Last year, last year. And we thought, and everyone's like, did you guys get on? Did you guys get on? And we're like, we can't say anything. <laughs> so, oh, just tell me. <laughs> right. oh, just I tell don't me. have the money to pay them if they find out that I leaked. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We're, so, anyways, we did a video, and Dorothy and I were bickering back and forth on one of our videos. But it took a while. It took like 20 takes to, to get... A, a three-minute video. Three minutes. Crazy. Because we're used to just sitting here and talking, but they wanted like a very specific format of... It was very specific to do your audition tape, and it was just three minutes. And you know what? It's more difficult to talk in a short amount of time than it is in a long amount of time. <laughs> Does that make sense? Dude, I feel like that's a moo point. <laughs> a moo point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, to talk just for three minutes was hard because you had to get to the point right away. Yeah. Anyway, the end. Well, right. What we were talking about, we don't want, we put a lot of time and effort into our social media, into our following, and, you, and I don't think you can just disappear for 30 days. Like, I don't think you can disappear for two days. Personally, when I do business coaching and working with entrepreneurs, I tell them, like, you have to be consistent. So that's a, a major concern for us to be able to make sure our posts are still going up and we're still answering questions and such. Bigger companies would hire someone to do that, but it's just Dorothy and I. <laughs> we, might, we might have to hire somebody to go incognito for us <laughs> for a month <laughs> but it's something that, yeah, it's that it's something that we talk about I, and I don't know what the other business owners would do or, or have done closing if, up shop <laughs> yeah, you, can't just, <laughs> sorry guys. you can't just stop business like, sorry guys we don't need any money coming in this month <laughs> Who's going to pay the bills? <laughs> <laughs> or just say to your landlord or the bank or where, who, who, if you have a mortgage or a rent to pay. Sorry, I'm not going to be paying rent this month. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sit with you? <laughs> yeah. so that was our background for The Amazing Race. Yes, that's all still set up from filming our tape yesterday. Oh boy, that was challenging. <laughs> okay. So, New Year's resolutions and goals. I kind of want to go back to, I want to go back to starting, like doing something healthier, for example. Like, I think it's better to transition into something healthier than just being like, bam. You know what the thing is? Many times when I sit down, this is more so when I took more individual clients on a basis, on a regular basis, like personal training or, or coaching, for example, they would say, I'm an all or nothing person. Mm. That'd be the first thing that they say. And that happened about, 80% of the time, 90%, they'd say, I'm an all or nothing person. And I would say, how far has that gotten you? <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> and then of course they're like, oh, like that's gotten you here. And usually people come to us when they're looking for more lifestyle changes. Cause that's what we teach. They've tried the fad diets. They've tried the coin, the, the cleanses, the potions, the powders and the pills that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and of course it, they don't work. They just don't work. They're not sustainable lifestyle stuff. So, so a lot of times people will take a shake, for example, and they'll lose 30 pounds in six days. And then, then, then they decide that those powders give them digestive issues, that they're too expensive to have, whatever it may be. And then they stop using them and they gain all the weight back. So that, and then people, this is like an issue of yo-yo dieting. And Dorothy, you've gone I know yourself. all about that. <laughs> Did that for years. <laughs> Did that for about 10 years. And it's exactly what Drew said is that you yo-yo back and forth because, yeah, you take the pills or you take the powders and you do lose a bunch of weight, but it all comes back. And then you're back to the starting point again. So what Drew was trying to get at, I think. Uh, what I was working at towards. <laughs> was... But you're answering. You need to make it lifestyle. That's why I talked about slowly transitioning into 
That's my tea. Mine's gone. I'm about to get you home. Mine's There's gone. tea in there. It's gone. Oh my. Okay. So if you slowly transition and you make it part of your lifestyle, if you make it part of your lifestyle, then you can keep it. You can keep your habits. You can make them sustainable and lasting. And you know what? <clears throat> not not. We're talking a lot about working out and exercise in the gym, but. The same goes for nutrition as well. We see all the time on those on those reality shows, they march into your kitchen with a big black bag, like garbage bag, and they wipe out your pantry like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope, nope, can't have this, can't have that. And you're left with one little sad orange in your fridge. <laughs> but we see it on reality TV all the time. And that is just not how we teach because... That's all or nothing. It's all. That's the all or nothing attitude. And how we would suggest going about improving your nutrition is just pick one thing, like one thing a week maybe, and look in your pantry and just transition from something you would consider as uh, not uh, not healthy choice and change that into a health a healthier choice. For example, maybe you have white pasta in your in your cupboard white noodles well the next time you go to buy pasta look for whole wheat pasta for example and in just slowly transition into healthier choices instead of going through your pantry and being like oh my god you're pulling your hair out <laughs> but those slow progressive sustainable changes are going to get you so much further than those quick crazy all or nothing changes yeah no question when we were starting out, we were horrible with videos and radio and everything we've done. I've never, I don't think I've naturally been good at anything. I think it's always been work. Like it's always been a struggle. It's always been a work to get good, <clears throat> but it's easy to see that. But that translates <clears throat> I, I, into what we're talking about today and setting and achieving goals is that you have to start somewhere. And although you might not be very good at it at first, if you continue to consistently do it over time and, and do it, on a consistent basis, you're going to get better at it, whether that's meal planning, whether that's workouts, whatever stretching routine or a meditation or breathing exercises, whatever that is for, for your health, then you're going to get better at it as you go, as long as you are consistent and continually work at it. Yeah, no question. I think it, it doesn't always have to be just health and wellness. I, mm. I feel like most of the New Year's resolutions are <clears throat> excuse me, are around health and wellness because that's what we're least happy with mm. throughout the year, which is kind of crazy because our health is at some point we'll realize health is all we have. Like with, we could have as much money as we want. We could have all the material things. We could even have positive relationships in our lives. But if we don't have our health, I don't think we have anything mm. because without our health, everything is upside down and everything is, unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, <clears throat> that's why the most of our new year's resolutions or most of our goals are around health because that's what we're least happy with. And it should be what we're most happy with. I think our health. Yeah. Yeah. And then like working together, that brings us to an, another good point is that working together with somebody or having a group of people there to motivate, to support also helps lead to more success in, in in achieving your goals as well. If you have the right environment and people on your side encouraging you and lifting you up and even possibly working towards the same goal. That's right. It's a group, a group of like-minded people. Right. That's why we started the group to begin with. Do you want to tell them about our membership group? Well, we started our monthly membership group. And like Drew said, we started or we created it to bring like-minded people together so that we could offer support, we could encourage, and just work together towards living a life, living a healthy lifestyle. There we go. Because it's tough. It's tough on your own. And we know that we're not, we don't all have those positive relationships or those positive environments in our life. So Drew and I thought, well, let's create a positive environment. But within uh, what we do within the monthly membership is that the, the support system, creating a healthy environment and a positive place for us to talk and, work through things together. So that's a big part of the monthly membership is the private group. Every all We're so fortunate to have such wonderful members in our group. Um, but the other parts of our membership is 
workouts. So every week we put out a workout schedule and every day you get a different activity to do. Our workouts are all body weight exercises that you can do at home. We wanted to make it accessible for everybody and we understand that not everybody has access to a gym or could afford to pay for two different programs. So we have the workouts that are posted every day. You can do them at home. You can. All, we also know people who do take them to the gym and do them as well. Mm-hmm. So it's up to you. A lot of times, we, we always talk about how the holidays are so difficult. But I think the summer, we'd have to argue that the summertime is one of the most difficult times because it's one of the longest times that we're normally away from routine. So the holidays were away from routine, usually a week or two, maybe a month. But during the summertime, it can be a couple of months that we're out of routine and it takes that much longer to get back into it. So if you can be consistent throughout the summer, then you know you're doing something, doing something fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Summer is so challenging. We we just got through the holidays, but the thing is, like we always talk about, there's no there's no great time. There's no better time mm-hmm. to start because we have we just went through the holidays, the Christmas holidays. Before that was Thanksgiving, so Thanksgiving, Christmas. Now we have New Year's coming up, so people are still waiting. Like, oh, I'll do it after. I'll do it after Thanksgiving. I'll do it after Christmas. I'll do it after New Year's. If you're always waiting for something to start, whatever your goal or whatever you're aspiring to do or be, it's not going to happen. So it's so important to start now, like start today. It doesn't matter that New Year's is coming up or it doesn't matter that there's a birthday coming up. Just do something today to change your lifestyle and work towards whatever you want in your life. And just, it doesn't have to be anything huge or anything big. You could just do one small thing today to start, just to start now. Yeah. Don't have to go run a 5K. (laughs) Even if you, you know, if running goal is in your future, for example, I'm just using it as an example, but if that is in your future, you don't have to be, to start off with, you know, a, a kilometer or two kilometers or whatever it may be. Just start with three, five minutes. Just start with something right now, right today. Yeah, something to get moving, something to get motivated. Mm-hmm. I think the groups really make a big difference. Like, that's why we started the mem- our membership group. Like, you could have a fitness class. You could have another support group. You could have friends or family that you might talk to. The thing is, a lot of times we don't have that support group. Mm-hmm. We don't have people that are that encourage us. We have people that drag us down. And unfortunately, it's a fact. We, we have mm-hmm. people that around surround us that don't want us to succeed. So they kind of... You go and you say you want to do something, like, oh, don't be silly. Yeah. Or they kind of laugh it off, like, oh, that's crazy. What's the matter with you? <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why we love the beat so much is because the environment is so different. Like, there's always someone. We can see someone riding a bike right now. I can see someone jogging down the road. And like, Right now. <laughs> that's all day. Literally. Right. And it's, there's always someone active. There's always someone doing something. And I feel like many times if we do something like working out outside, in olds, for example, I feel like people are like, what's wrong with those people? <laughs> and usually we're the only ones that we could see doing it. So anyways, the environment is, it means so much. And, and for us to be able to run or bike next to someone or I'll go surfing, I'm learning to surf. So there's 20 other surfers out there that you could learn from or be inspired by. So it's much different, your environment. So that's why we think we feel that that group makes such a big difference. We talked a lot about being active. I think we could, we, we did also mention that it doesn't have to be around health and wellness. It could be other things in your life. It could be business, for example. It could be relationships. It could be improving your family. Financial goals, right? Financial goals is a big one. Mm-hmm. I think finance, yeah, finance, I feel like finances and like your health finances, or no, how can you say? I'm not sure what I'm getting at. You, healthy finances? Like having healthy finances and having a healthy life or healthy body work. I feel like they go hand in hand. Yeah. Not sure why. But I feel like some, like we always put off our finances. I'll save money later or I'll not spend money on those things at another time. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many things that we could do to save money, but we're so obsessed with having more. Like we need to have more, I don't know. We need to have more shoes or clothes. We need to have more electronics, whatever it is, but we're so obsessed with having more keeping up with other pe- people in our commun- communities or, or closed circles and more jewelry, whatever it is. But Electronics is a big one, right? 
yeah. like a new phone, a new iPad, a new computer, a new gaming system. If I don't know how those work, but <laughs> but I know they're popular, right? Yeah, I think if we could push that to to the side and realize what really makes us happy. We understand that those the collecting things don't really make us that happy. Right. If they do, it's for a moment. Like for, it's for a short moment, and then that moves on in our life, and then we're like, what else? Or what, what else can we get that's going to make us happy? And that, that goes back to, like, those financial goals of, like, having credit card debt, for example. Like, paying off your credit card debt would be the first thing. And then starting to save money, for example. But... Like for us, like we travel, we travel quite a bit, but we're pretty, like Dorothy's really good at finding deals or we find other, like, <gasps> <Couponer! laughs> she's really good at finding deals, for example, or the things like the surfboard, like surfing over there. I got that for like 30 bucks and it took me a couple weeks to find it. Um, cause most of the boards, the used boards were like 120 bucks. And I was like, I'm just learning. I don't need a hundred dollar board. But and it's just these little things. It's you could call it cheap, or you could call it. Some people might call it thrifty, or whatever you call. It. Like if, but if you look around and you realize that you don't need the the best board out there. If you don't need a brand new, our phone is like five years old. <laughs> like we don't need these. Those things don't make us happy. Like the experiences, the things that make it, being healthy, spending time together. Those things are important, not the most expensive things you could find. It and that really makes a difference. And. I think if we focused on the things that actually made us happy, then most of us wouldn't be in so much credit card debt trying to <laughs> trying to get up dog paddle over the wall. You know what's funny too is that there's so much stuff in our in our world and you know what I mean? There's there's thrift stores like bursting at the seams with things to to basically give away and and you know, there's the neighbors with things they don't use and there's so much Stuff that we don't have to buy brand new all the time, but it's ingrained in us somewhere. It comes from somewhere that we need to always buy new. But there's so many things that we can get at a thrift store or that we can get from a friend or like our recent extension cord. <laughs> when we needed an extension cord, but instead of running out to the store and buying one, we just ask some friends if they have extra one lying around. Right? So if you just kind of think think differently and and know that we don't always have to have brand new then there's a lot of a lot of ways to trim up that way yeah that's something something that um that Dorothy and I enjoy doing we enjoy going to the thrift store and finding like finding things they're like little hidden treasures and that's fun for us so I don't maybe that's not fun for everyone but I guess just going back to finding brand new like for us we're environmentally friendly we're conscious of how we treat the planet and I think that sometimes we go to the thrift store and they can't take any more things. Mm-hmm. They have a sign up they that says... They have a sign that says... Like we can't accept any more items. So we, it's not that we, we, we need two things. We need people to stop buying brand new. And we need to, people to um, start buying used, I suppose. Right? Yeah, I guess that kind of goes hand in hand. Right? Yeah, there's a different one I wanted to <laughs> But I suppose... Oh, oh. I think it just comes up overconsumption. Like we always want more. We always need more. There's perfectly good things at the at things that are used that we could be using instead of filling our landfills and oceans up with trash and keep buying things and throwing them away. It's, it's a throwaway society. That's it's called. So I think that would make a difference in our lives. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are out of here. Catch you later. Thanks for tuning in. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on Facebook.com slash True Form Life. We post stuff there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge, Tabata challenge, whatever it may be we'd love to have you join us we're also on instagram.com slash drew tadia again we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track our main website is trueformlife.com if you want to check out some of our products some of our services or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more we got all that at trueformlife.com once again thank you so much 
much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.